Guys and girls, T5 tailgate time. We've got a T5 van, we've got the early tailgate, we've also got a T6 tailgate, some T6 lights, T6 rear bumper, a bare T6 tailgate, so we need to work out a few bits. No chit chat, let's get straight into it. Ah, yeah. We got a 2005, you can tell that by a 2005 T5 transporter. We've already got the tailgate. If you've got barn doors, I will run you through briefly upgrading to the tailgate, whether it be T5 or T6. I will run you through that, but we got the tailgate on this. We've got the T6 tailgate. We're gonna upgrade it today. And if I open said massive tailgate, I've got some T6 rear lights. These are a used set. I paid 40 quid off Facebook Marketplace. Uh, some T6 rear lights for the tailgate model. Someone had upgraded to LEDs, so they come nicely in the box. They're in good condition, 40 quid, happy days. Also got a T5 transporter rear bumper. T6 transporter rear bumper, in fact. I believe it's a tailgate model. I don't know, but we're gonna find out when we stick it on, and then when I shut it, it crushes all the end. But we're gonna find out. I have got a bare tailgate. Let me quickly show you that. So it's a lot of money for a T6 tailgate. If you've uh, been lucky enough to get a tailgate with all the upgraded bits, i.e. handle, the wiring loom, brake light, hinges, yada yada, happy days. I couldn't afford to get one. Um, I ended up with a bare tailgate. I paid zero pounds for it. If you wanna know why, check out the last video. But we've got a tailgate. I have repaired some damage. Uh, quite a few bits of damage in fact, but it was free, so happy days. That tailgate's uh, bare, empty, nothing in it. I have ordered a handle and an inner bracket from TPS, Genuine VW. I'll explain, they'll be here tomorrow. But today's task, we're gonna get the tailgate on the T5. Hopefully it fits straight on. I believe it does, but we're gonna find out. I haven't got any hinges for that. So hopefully the T5 ones fit. I've done some research and I think they fit. Let's get, the, uh, let's get the stand out. I need to get a couple of pairs of hands to help me. Let's, uh, let's see if this bad boy fits. I've enlisted the help of two people. Jim, hello Jim. Hi. Hi. Hello. And this is Fox. Hi. Nathan, it's the other Nathan from uh, the workshop down there. Um, anyway, I can't do it. I'm gonna be the steerer. So I'll take the gas straps off first. I guess. Things you do. I want to get a bit closer. Ow, just stab myself. I'm going to go, I'm going to take these right off. Just take them off, mate. I'm, oh, there's one. That's all you now, Jim. We're coming in hot like a wrecking ball. Something like that. Oh, oh yeah. nearly knocked me out. That's off. Uh, One. Nice gun, that. It's all right, isn't it? Thank you. And we're off. That is you. Out of here. Oh, fuck myself on the head. Anywhere you like, there on the floor is fine. It's quite heavy. Yeah. Thank you. Let's get the other one. Uh, do you want to lift it? I'll be the steerer. Oh, you do that all the way down there, wouldn't you? Now, I don't know if the hinges are the same, so we're going to find out. I googled it and I think they are. Same position, left to right, like Ant and Deck, because they're always stood on the same side. Yeah. Come on in. Thank you. I did do some research on the T5, T6 hinges. They look the same. But when I visibly look at them, they don't look the same. But we're going to find out. <laughs> Oh, shit. What am I doing? All loads? Wait, wait, on the back? Uh, either or. Same meat, different gravy. That looks good. It's touching the old room. Wait there, I'll just get that one there. Yeah, that's touching the room. Yeah, 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 hang on. That oh, line up. The, they do line up. you got to love a VW facelift. Just bolt it on. That is touching there. Where? Oh. 
Oh, what? Slightly different shape. Oh, what? No, it, ain't, it does fit. Might close. No, it'll close. Yeah, that'll close. Yeah. Right, you go slowly. Oh, yeah, it comes away. Watch your fingers, guys. There's no gas struts. Sort of. Yeah, keep going. Oh, it's the rubber holding it out. Okay, what, is it, what do you reckon? Have a look around. You guys are bodywork experts. So it needs to... Just over a bit. So this one's... Yeah. What, is it over? No, oh, yeah. Up the top there. Yeah. It's like this. Yeah. It needs to come like that. Yeah, I'll get that. See, look, that's yeah. there. That, yeah. This corner here is perfect. So, so is it just this one up? But that, yeah. So it needs to, yeah, it needs to come like this. Yeah. And it can't be done with the bolts I've just done. It needs but to be the inner ones. a lot of that will come from that hinge going up. Yeah. That will adjust that quite a lot. Yeah, okay. Well, it if might you... not need to elongate those holes. Might get away with lifting. I'm doing the inner ones. Up. Yeah. Okay, let's quickly do it. Only this one, though. You've got a customer, you're going to have to talk to him. All right. Yeah. So, tailgate on the floor. Ta da! T6 tailgate on. And I've spent a little while playing about with the hinges. We've got the two bolts that do the in and out, and we've got two bolts that do up and down. It is as good as I can get it, and I'm happy with it. I have looked around it, and I've looked at two other transporters that I've got here. And the, the margin of error, it's not the right word, but you know what I mean, is the same on all three. They're not absolutely millimetre perfect. They're not uh, Bugattis or supercars or high-end Mercedes. It's a van, so the gaps are good enough for the van. No one had even noticed. And to be honest, when I'm looking at it, I'm looking for perfection. And I'm also looking at a grey panel versus a white van, so you can see them a bit more. Once the van's grey, or silver, and silver, grey, grey, you won't notice it at all. So I have spent maybe 45 minutes shimmying about with the hinges. I've got the rear lights in just to confirm that the gaps are all good. The lights aren't screwed in, so when I push them in, it closes the gap up. There is a bit of force to push those in. I don't know if there's something on the back of the light I need to shave down, or whether these two poppers that the light pops into are adjustable, but there is quite a bit of force to push those in so the screws would do up. So I might need to shave something off the back of the light. I might need to adjust something. I don't know, but I will explain when we get there. And if we see what I'm on about, can we see the tailgate is just stepped in? It's the same gap there. And it's the same gap there. I'm happy with that. You don't want your tailgate poking out because then the wind coming will get underneath it and whistle. So the tailgate just sitting in a mill or two is where it needs to be. It's the same on it's the same on that van and it's the same on that T5. I know that one's barn doors, but you get the idea. The tolerances, that's the word, are the same on all of these vans. They're not mill perfect, but they're good. Um, yeah, happy with that. I do need to try out the striker, which is on the bottom. I'm waiting for a new handle to turn up, but that's today's progress. I'm gonna fiddle about with a few more bits, and then I'll tell you what I find out, but I am super pumped so far. Oh, just quickly, to undo the inner hinge bolts, it's a 12 mil socket, but the bolts are about that long. So I welded a 15 mil, you could use any size, your worst socket, just to lengthen it up because the end of the bolt is that long. I welded two together. I'll probably take the spot welds off and save both sockets, but you have to weld them together. A good time has passed, been out for dinner and stuff. And before, where's the hazard switch? Before I, Before I start pin swapping lights, I'm just checking these lights work first. Imagine if you've done some pin swaps on the lights and then some of them didn't work. Well, then you'd be chasing your tail. So I'm just checking that these lights work. Lights, lights, indicators, yep. And then we're gonna do the pin swap. I have tried the lights in, we know they fit. Yeah, we know the lights fit. They fit against the tailgate. Happy days. I'll tell you what I've done. Because when I put the lights in, 
they ever so slightly pushed out a little bit. So, can we see this little bit of plastic right here? I just shaved it down, a tiny little piece. That way, when I put the lights on, I haven't got to force them in to get the screws in. Don't know what the difference is. Just shaved a bit of plastic off, fit snug. Anyway, I will get the camera set up better. Need to get these lights out. I've got a guide on the internet. I will put the same guide, a picture up in here. We're gonna de-pin these, de-pin all the wires, I believe, poke them in the right spots, and then we'll try them. Let's do it. So we are starting on the driver's side. And if I can find my little tool, yes. Inside there, let me see if we can see, there's a little purple clip. We just need to shimmy him out. This little purple clip, shimmy him out, like so. And then I've got these. They are de-pinning tools. Easy enough. I don't know what side the pin's on, but we're gonna find out. So I've just got my de-pinning key in there. I'm giving it a little tweak. Let's try the other side. I think I can feel that. Oh, there's half the tools. Oh, mate, it's all going on now. Don't know if there's a pin either side. So let me put one in either side, the front and the back. There we go. Nice and simple. I am gonna de-pin all of them. So I'm putting a key in the top hole and one in the bottom hole. And then I'm gonna sort of open the keys up like so. Now I'm then gonna push the wire in. <laughs> Bit of a wiggle on the keys. Bosh, straight out. That is how you do it. I'll get all these out. I'll have a look on the guide on the tinter web and uh, we'll report back. Oh yeah, so this is the driver's side. The clip on the front, number one on the left. This green wire, that is reverse. The earlier VWs have a reverse light both side. On the later ones, they don't. So this wire doesn't need to be there but rather than cut it off, I poked it in there. It doesn't plug to anything this side, but that is the driver's side wiring plug to go from T5 to T6. Hopefully, you can see what's going on there. That's the driver's side. That is T6 wiring, or it is now. Let's have a look at the passenger side. Uh, one empty slot, and this is the passenger side. Um, hopefully, you can see what color wires are where. I will write out the pin out in the video description. Again, number one is at the left with the clip on the front. While I fit these lights back in, check out this footage from last night. I did copy a guide off of a very good website. I don't know what the deal was, but it weren't right. Check out this footage from last night while I stick the lights back in and we could test them. So let's try that again. I'll have a bit of ignition on. Uh, I don't know if the brake light's working, I can't see. Oh yeah, I can see a re uh, reflection on the camera. Happy days, side lights. Hazards. Uh, what are we saying, do they work? Oh, okay. No. We have got the whole lot, oh that looks pretty sweet though, doesn't it? But it's not right. Uh, that's not right, surely, is it right? Or is that right? I haven't got an indicator. So, that's a reverse. Uh, that looks cool as, I don't know if that's right, it should be flashing orange, surely. Well, I don't know. I will update you by the end of this video. Let's try that again. Copied a full-on guide on the internet. Didn't work. What are we saying? Side, let me put the ignition on to shut that up. Side lights. Brake lights. Oh, 
I can't see. Indicators. Let me come and have a look. I'm going to have to check the footage to check the brake lights. Oh, you are absolutely... <sighs> so as you can see, I did have some fun last night. Copied a guide offline and it was no good. Um, I then ended up taking the board or the light cluster apart and then tracing all the wires back um, just to make sure that we got it right. And I believe I tested them without the lenses on, but we're going to find out for sure. Ignition on, tailgates open, we know that. Side lights, low fuel, all right. Side lights, right indicator, left indicator, reverse light, and off, and fog light. And then lastly, all the lights off, brake lights. And a bit on. Hopefully we've got no dancing earth where everything starts flashing. Let's get them all on. Let's have a party. Uh, one more. That should be all of them. Hopefully you can see. It's quite bright out there, but I'm sure you can. If we can't, I'll have to be taking that shot again later. Uh, ignition off. Happy days. Again, I will put the pin out in the video description. The lights fit in nicely. Um, yeah, happy. I did shave a bit off the back of the lights, a very small bit of plastic. I might have showed that in the last shot. Um, yeah, everything fits on. And if I shut the tailgate, I need the key. Do I need the key? Yes. So I have done the wiring on the tailgate and I'm just about to explain what I used and what I didn't use. Basically, I used everything from the T5, T5 wiring, everything. But I did buy a handful of other bits. Uh, tailgate. Tailgate shut. So if I lock it, button doesn't work. Unlock it. Oh yeah. That's probably one of the main bits you guys are watching this video for. Um, to get that wiring done because I've done some research and I couldn't find any. If you've got the full T6 wiring loom, it's going to be different. My tailgate was bare empty, so I had to make it happen. If you've got the T6 wiring loom, I believe you need to run two wires back to the body control module. It made me jump. That's because the uh, I didn't open the door. I believe you need to run two wires back to the body control module. Um, I used everything T5. I just bought a lock solenoid and I made it happen. Um, and I did mention at the start of the video, if you're coming from twin doors, barn doors to tailgate, whether that T5 or T6, the provisions are already there. I've looked on a T5 that's over there. Your barn door hinges are here. Obviously these hinges are up here. There is holes and these recesses ready for a tailgate and the striker has already got the holes there so you haven't got to drill anything you haven't got to tap anything um you could put a tailgate straight on a barn door van and i've seen online you get some little metal brackets <whistles> the bolt on the corner here to take the load of the gas ruts super simple if i ever get one i might do it to the caddy but i think it's a bit more involved that's for another day um yeah anyway let's have a look at this tailgate and see what I've hodgepodge together. But we've just seen it work. That's lock, unlock, and open. Let's have a butcher's. So I have mentioned, I had a tailgate that had nothing in it. No wiring loom, absolutely nothing. And if I'd have gone out and bought all the T6 bits, it would have cost 500 quid for all the bits. I had the T5 stuff and I knew it worked. So I bought a handful of bits and I've made it work. Basically, we have got the old T5 boot loom running in from there, and you threadle it out. That's nice and easy out of your one. To get it back in, I ended up poking some copper brake pipe through that side, taping it to the end, and then pulling it back through. It's a bit of a wiggle. I did end up greasing it with a bit of WD-40, which seemed to help. We got the T5 loom running through the T6 tailgate. Then I needed to work out how to open and close the boot. 
So I run some one mil cable, which is 16 amp, and you can see I've coiled it up there because I'm not 100% finished. And uh, I have just piggybacked for testing purposes off the interior light and I earthed it right there. That's only testing purposes because I believe the live will drop off of this wire after about half an hour. You know, if you leave the interior light on, it will eventually turn off. I'm gonna run that to the fuse box under the coin holder with a little fuse insert. That then, if the boot ever don't work, I can check the fuse up there. But for testing purposes, we've got the wire that runs to here. That is the live and the earth that I've added. And now, to open and close the boot, I did buy this panel, which is the inner handle from TPS. I'll put the price and the part number on the screen right now, and I'll add it to the video description. And I also brought the outer handle from TPS. I'll put the price and the part number on the screen now. You'll notice it doesn't have the outer trim. That outer trim was more than all the other pieces. I'll add the price of that now and the part number um, to the screen, but we wanted the original handle. And uh, it's very simple. Because the, lock sim because the lock is just a lever type and a plunger, I bought a little five quid door solenoid off the internet. I actually had it in stock, but I did buy it off the internet at one point. And uh, that is as simple as two wires, a live and an earth. Wherever the live is, there it is, the green. It's a green and a blue. That's a two wire door solenoid. You can use these on various ways. That plunger plunges in when you stick live up it. Or if you want it to plunge out, you swap the wires around. Nice and simple. Worked out what way the wires were on my setup. And basically the blue was earth and the green was live. And you can see what's going on. I have mounted the plunger there. And if I lower the boot, as soon as the GoPro auto focuses, you'll see that I added an inch to the mechanism in there, crudely welded it on. I didn't need to, but it might have got in the way of the handle here. So I did lengthen it by an inch. And by lengthening it, I believe that has doubled or halved, should I say, the force on this plunger. I didn't want too much force on it. I wanted it to last as long as possible. So I lengthened it, give me a better angle, and it's lowered the, uh, the current on it. And basically, I'm sure some of you have worked out what's going on here. I have earthed my wire that we added straight to the plunger. And then the live runs through the handle. And if you can imagine, you push the button, that then pops a solenoid. For donk, nice and simple. And then I looked online. I'd already worked all this out and then looked online because I didn't know how to lock it or unlock it. If you just wired it straight like that, it's gonna unlock whether the van's locked or unlocked. And just quickly, I was gonna put a relay in this and use a relay so there weren't high current running through the switch, but there's a guy online and he's had this working like this for three years and that hasn't burnt the button out. So I've skipped the relay and I've gone direct current running through it. You could obviously switch the earth through the switch or you can switch the live. I switch the live. But basically that creates the signal, the loop, to do the plunger. And then this clever guy on the T5 forum, he has done this. So this is the old T5 door lock assembly. I've crudely cable tied it in place there. I might leave it permanent. I might even just tiger seal, glue, PU adhesive, that there. And what's going on here, every time I unlock it and lock it with the original plug, that throws this little white pin left or right. I've then used a micro switch and run that through the handle as well. So when it's open, the button will work. And when it's locked, it's not. I have only glued that micro switch in there, but it works. And my favorite YouTuber says, is it really a dumb idea if it works? Um, I hope I have kept that simple enough explaining. Sometimes it's hard to explain stuff on how it works, but I hope you get it. Let's shut the boot and see if it works. Boot is shut, van is locked, button doesn't work. I can hear it clicking, but it's not working. Unlock it. Ooh, works nice. Shut, locked, 
doesn't work, unlock. Ah, oh, yeah, as simple as that. Now, without taking my head off, you can put a screw through that um, micro switch and the guy online actually had, but I didn't want to screw it on and then, um, and then screw into the lock assembly. But that's using the old lock assembly, the old wiring loom, absolutely everything. Um, I'll just quickly show you the plunger working or the micro switch. So that is unlocked. The tailgate button works and if I lock it, it's crude but effective. Works every time. Easy as that. I've used everything from the, uh, from the T5 tailgate in the T6. Um, I did buy the handle, obviously, but wiring, the little plunger, all cheap enough, all simple enough. Those little uh, micro switches, they're like two quid. I did solder some wire lengths on there and I did uh, heat shrink them on there. One thing to point out, obviously this handle doesn't come with a little two wire clip. I wanted to use the proper clip. I didn't want spade terminals in there because it's a bit small. So our, a good friend of mine hooked up the part number and that is the part number to this uh, wiring connector. But of course it doesn't come with wires, but I did have an old loom I managed to get some out of. So it's the following day and I did get my replacement bits, including new bumper corners. There's the old one. There's the new one for the T6. They're ever so slightly different. They were like 13, 14 quid each. Again, I will put the part number to everything I've used in the video description. We got both sides and they both clip in. No drilling of extra holes. And these little funny plastic hex screws, I use a T20, bang it in, unscrew them, pop straight out. Um, seen a few people online struggling with them. Anyway, both corners are on and I've got the later style bumper support bracket crash bar. That was 25 quid on eBay. Let me quickly zoom in on the part number. Oh yeah. And uh, the old one had a massive metal one. Big metal bumper bar, but this is for the T6, I believe. We're gonna find out when I clip the bumper on. But this is the final fit up. Oh, I've just spotted a couple more trim clips needed. Oh yeah. So I'm going to fit the last of these bumper bits up and final fit it and literally we're getting there. I did get the new cover for the handle. That was the most expensive bit. Tiny thin bit of plastic, that was the most expensive. We got that, ease on, final fit and uh, yeah, we're drawing to a close and finish up on this video. It's all going super swimmingly actually. Super happy with how it is, got to love a love of VW facelift literally bolt straight on. Let me finish the rest of this and uh, we'll wrap this up. We're done with the back end swap and it has gone to plan, super easy. All the back bumper and the bumper corners, they fit straight on, bumpers all clipped in place. There isn't any, uh, any screws in the bumper, it's literally clipped solid. We will obviously put some screws in for the final fit. The trim panels, they fit straight on. All the trim clips, lovely jubbly. The rear lights, all the screw holes and the locators, they lined up. Uh, I'm sure you've seen. We had fun with the wiring and the pin out, but we got there in the end. They're obviously in the video description. Um, yeah, nice and easy. Super easy, in fact. Everything from the T5, as we know, is from the T5 tailgate fit straight into the T6 one. Um, yeah, really easy. The easiest part was bolting the tailgate on and the rest was just as easy, to be honest. I do have a, a new reflector to go in the back bumper, but we don't need to fit that until, uh, until we paint the rear bumper. We're gonna be moving on with the paintwork very soon. Um, one thing or two things I haven't mentioned in the video, the number plate lights. I haven't got number plate lights for the T6 tailgate. They are, that is the only difference for the number plate lights from the T5 to the T6. Um, you can get the T6 ones easy enough and they are just a, a simple two pin plug. So if you've got different ones or aftermarket ones, it's a two pin plug, two wires, a live and an earth. If you've got a T5 one, you might end up with a, and if you use an LED, a non-CAN bus one, you're gonna have a bulb warning light on the dash. You can code them out, or you can get a ballast resistor. Let me just get one. 
This is a ballast resistor. Wire each end, nice and simple, and you can see it's red. So if you plan to put an LED in and you can't code out your warning light and you've got a light on the dash and it's bugging you, you cut the live wire, which is from the two wires, get a voltmeter, it will tell you which one's live, which one's not. Cut the live wire, put this in with it in parallel, and the resistance this draws turns the bulb warning light off. Super easy, eBay, CAN bus ballast resistor. One wire in, one wire out. Cut the live wire, put that in, nice and easy. Um, and with the brake light, I haven't got one yet. I've ordered one. I probably could have just ordered one from TPS because bits are quite cheap, but it's like 13 quid from China. I'm sure it's going to fit nice or not. That clips in there. And this is the T5 wiring. The plug might be different. You might have to cut it off, wire it on, but it's just a simple two wire brake light switch or brake light, sorry, clips in two wires, relatively simple enough. If you're going to take on a tailgate swap, I'm sure you can work that out. Um, yeah, anyway, all finished with that. It's gone to plan, super happy. There's one thing I want to mention. If, uh, if you guys enjoy the, the once a month caddy meet videos, there isn't one this month. I do apologize. That was yesterday. I spent ages cleaning, polishing the caddy, as we know. As we know, I normally do. Uh, looking super shiny. We got up there uh, a little bit early. We got in the main stage or in the main strip of the Blue Water car park. Loads of new faces turned up, loads of new people. First of all, there was a, a younger guy. He had had his caddy for two years, started watching the channel, and then started modifying his caddy. He was absolutely loving it. Nice guy. And uh, yeah, big shout out to you. Another guy had travelled six hours. He watches the channel. He'd travelled six hours, a six hour round trip. Let's, uh, let's get that right. Six hour round trip to come to the Blue Water Caddy meet. Um, really nice guy, watches the channel. He had a really nice Mark IV Maxi. It looked real nice. Um, really nice guy, really nice to talk to. Big shout out for you for making the effort and coming to say hello. Really nice to talk with you. Hopefully you come to the next one. And there was another guy with another red one. It's nice to see another red one. There isn't many, so when you see one, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, he turned up with his missus, his young daughter and their friend and they all had a caddy each. So there was a lot of new people turning up to the meet and hopefully the guy with the red one is at the next meet and the Mark IV because he had some really nice bits uh, under his bonnet. He had some really nice lights on the, in the headliner in the caddy, loads of speakers and stuff like that. Hopefully I'll get to show it to you on the next video. Super cool geezer, really nice to meet you and the family. Hopefully you come to the next one. But after going for some food and coming back, one of the newcomers, he had more subs than the local subway speakers, and uh, he was pumping his music. The security guys to Blue Water went over to speak to him, turn it off, he turned it off. Then when they turned around, he turned it back on again and then gave them a little bit of back chat. Then the police turned up and then we had to leave. No one got in trouble or anything like that, but because he'd made a scene, we had to leave. Mm. So if you're thinking about coming to the caddy meet once a month, last Wednesday of the month, please be respectful. We're in a multi-story car park, no loud music, no pops and bangs mapping. Just um, be a bit courteous. We are allowed to use the facility, but we're not allowed any loud antisocial behavior. It is a static meet. We just go to have a chat, wander around, have a burger, say hello, look at other people's vans and appreciate what everyone's done. So if you're planning to come to the caddy meets, it's low key, be respectful of where we are. Anyway, enough about the caddies. Uh, I do apologize, there's no video on that this month, but there will be one next month. Anyway, let's wrap up this video. I'm super happy with the T5 to T6 tailgate conversion. It looks the part. I'm looking forward to getting on with the paintwork. Um, silver top half, grey bottom half if you didn't know. One thing I need your help on. I think I'm decided, but I would like to hear your opinions. Hopefully we can see in the shot, maybe, maybe not, the swage line on a T5, T6 van is up here. So at the rear lights, it's at the top of the light. 
And then the new tailgates, it is the same on the old one, but there ain't a swage line. The swage line is further down. So the silver is gonna have to droop down and run along the tailgate swage line. It's either that, or I have to tape a line along the boot and then it, it will look a bit weird around the swage line because we'll have silver here, or grey there, or do I bring the silver down nicely around the light and stick along? I'm unsure. I believe I'm going to come down with the silver. It would have been nice if the swage line was there, but it's not. It's the same on T5s and T6, so it's not as if it's different for an earlier and a later model. It's a bit of a, a, bit of a decision I need to make. I want to hear your opinions. Um, but uh, yeah, we're done with the T6 tailgate swap. If you enjoyed the video or found it useful, click the thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe for more T5 content and T5 loving. And I'll see you in the next one. I'm out.